So, been doing more thinking because I've had all this time to think because the uh, net gain Hyper 9 motors are still on back order and they're great motors and everything, but um, the more you think about it, the more you have time to think about the things, you, you uh, reanalyze it. And uh, um, so, anyway, I come around kind of like 360 right from the very beginning. My first thoughts were um, Tesla powered. So, I'm going to put a Tesla motor in this thing. We're having fun converting to electric. <laughs> <laughs> Tesla motor obviously one it's going to be so much more power um, uh, so we won't have that limitation it's liquid cooled so we won't have those uh, heating issues uh, where the hyper nines are air cooled the reason I didn't do it right away in the is because um, things weren't uh, as available as they are now and uh, now there's so many uh, companies out there that are, have been doing this for a while so there's uh, lots of suppliers uh, to help you out um, with figuring out how to uh, put a Tesla motor and inverter in uh, into a vehicle and uh, and availability like um, a lot of these these Model S's uh, they they started making them in 2012 so now they're getting uh, rather old and so there's um, uh, like uh, if they're in an accident um, uh, the insurance companies won't necessarily fix them anymore because they um, cost too much to repair them so now I'm just going to go find one of these motors. Okay, there it is. My first generation Tesla Model S rear drive unit that I'm going to put in to my boat. Crazy. And crazier than that is I'm going to put it into my car and take it back home. That's going to be fun. Oh, it fits in there quite nice. And the extra 290 pounds in the back. Driving for about an hour now. And, uh, yeah, that didn't bother the car at all. Handled really nice. So I guess now you, now you know if you want to use your Model S as a truck, you can. <laughs> On these first generation Tesla Model S rear drive units, years 2012-2015, some of them had coolant leaks. So I've got to take the coolant manifold off, take the coolant pipe, put it to the side, and then remove the rotor cooler, and that's where the seal is. The fluid goes right down the middle of that rotor, doing an amazing job that motor and then we got to continue and pull off the side cover and the encoder ring then look for water damage
rotor itself looks good. The bearings look okay, but I'm going to replace them anyway. The stator has some water damage pooled at the bottom while it was being stored. It's pretty minor. You'll just be able to scrub it up and then just put it all back together. Electric zero emission vehicle, go green.